So um, today we're gonna make kind of our first foray into making a puppet. Um, so I'm really excited about that and uh, feel free to ask me any questions you may have along the way because this is kind of like a new experience for me too. Um, so I am using some um, patterns that uh, I just got off the internet and in the future I'm hoping to um, create my own puppet pattern so I'm not just making like this generic puppet head. I mean obviously it's not going to look the same as what um, they're all gonna look different because it's all in how you kind of like accessorize and what textiles you choose. But anyway, um, this guy, Adam Kutninger, he's a great puppet maker and I've been watching his uh, YouTube videos and I got this off his website. So if you would also like to make a puppet um, using this method, please feel free to go to his website and get this free pattern and you can follow along. Uh, just a second, hold on, I gotta do something on my tablet real quick to fix something. Okay. The light in here is not like the most awesome because it's the middle of the day. So hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing and it's all right. So first we're gonna cut our foam. This is just green craft foam that you can get from like Joann's or wherever. It's a half an inch thick, um, half inch thick green foam. Um, Adam Krutninger recommends a more fancy foam that you can get online from craft, su craft suppliers, but I kind of wanted to like do this right away. <laughs> and this is something that I could get in town. Um, and uh, I always find it's better to just invest in something kind of quick and easy before you start getting the big, the big boy materials. Um, just in case you do the craft one time and you're like, well, I hated that, <laughs> and you never do it again. Although I don't think that's going to be the case for me with puppet making, because I love puppets. So we're going to start out just marking this. Um, you can see uh, my husband is also interested in doing this, so we did a little bit of a test run on making the heads this weekend as just like a fun date night thing. So we've already cut out some of these things. And it was a good thing that we did because I just, we used just uh, rubber cement that we had around the house and it was horrible. <laughs> we did eventually get it to work, but it, it, it took a lot of effort. So we're just gonna trace this on the foam. This is one of my favorite things about doing crafts as opposed to doing like garment construction. When you're just working with you can do this with leather too, with like foam or leather or whatever. I didn't bring any of my pattern weights over here, so that's great. So I'm just gonna kind of have to like hold this. Um, you could just kind of put your pattern pieces um, without having to think about grain line, because there is no goddamn grain line, <laughs> which is really nice. So you just kind of um, nest them as much as possible. So you don't waste any foam. And I have a little box on the side here that I'm using to collect all my foam scrap. So we're just gonna kind of place these. I can't knock anything off my table. I'm just at the coffee table, which is an awesome location to be doing this. But I don't want to be standing up the whole time, so I didn't want to do it at my cutting table, which is actually the dining room table. Which is also not awesome, but unfortunately that's how it's got to be right now, because that's all the room we've got in this house. I don't have a big enough workspace right now to put a real cutting table into it, which is a major bummer for me, um, and, you know, for my poor husband because we do not have a dining table right now or you know since uh i got laid off and i had to start using the dining room table as a cutting table again because i no longer have access to a costume shop so i'm hoping we're gonna be moving i think in the summer and one thing i'm really really hoping and praying for is to get a workspace that is gonna be big enough for me to have a cutting table 
in. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut these out. Whoops. Again, I still haven't quite got used to the fact that there's just like cameras hovering around. I'm just flailing my body around wildly. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this out. Um, again, a nice thing about crafts, while well, you, you know, of course you want your cuts to be nice on the lines. It's not do or die like it is in tailoring, where you're like, everything has to be perfect. Because if you're an eighth of an inch off here, and you're an eighth of an inch off there, and you're an eighth of an inch off over that away, eventually you're like a whole inch off and it fucks up your whole fit. Oh my gosh. Wrestling this huge thing of bone. Yeah, when I'm working with big materials like this, one of the first things I do is I just cut this off of my main main bolt. While still this is a funky shape here. I'm gonna cut up to there and then I'll cut across so that I can roll this felt back up again. So these are the two sides of my head. I didn't explain this because I'm a big goobus. Um, but I'm just gonna throw this felt over felt <laughs> this foam over here for right now. I'm gonna use it to cut out the body later. Although we won't be building the body for a little while, so I don't really have to cut it now. Um, so this is our head. I watched his cool video on drafting the head pattern, so I'm gonna be doing that next time. Right now I'm just making puppets that have like kind of a generic shape head. Um, so I'm making two puppets, one I'm making with my husband and one I'm making here, and I haven't decided which is gonna be which yet, but I have two puppets that I want to make, two concepts that I wanna make. Um, and the first one is I want to make the, um, the 80s businessman from Futurama, you know, the, my only regret is having bonitis. Um, I want to make that guy. And I also would like to make the dude from Big Lebowski. So, um, as I go, I'll decide which I want to work on on the stream and which I want to work on off stream, um, with my hubby. So we'll figure that out. But anyway, um, I'm gonna be making uh, um, Walter and Donnie also from the Big Lebowski and their heads are gonna be separate. Well, I'm gonna be making um, Walter and then my husband is gonna make Donnie mostly because he wanted to make the Steve Buscemi eyes <laughs> as like a special project. Anyway, so we will be, um, I will be sculpting and pattern drafting a custom puppet head on stream at some point, but so this is the mouth, obviously it says mouth on it. Um, this is the middle of the head, the like center line of the head because it's two pieces, right side, left side. This is the dart that makes the curve, right? So, so it opens like this and then when you close it, it, I'm an idiot, it curves over like so. So you can kind of see and it becomes kind of a dome. And then this is the neck. Um, this part right here is the um, front of the chin. So as this closes and that closes like so, um, this part here becomes where your hand goes in to, to work the mouth. That's how that's gonna work. And it'll make more sense like as we start gluing. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting these out. The glue that I have is, um, I had such a nightmare finding any kind of a glue that would work in this stupid city. <laughs> I don't know what is going on, but, um, I had to, like I said, the first time I did it was just with rubber cement and it was god awful. Elmer's rubber cement is not good for any real craft project. <laughs> It's so crappy. Um, and it takes forever to dry. We were like struggling to get it to, to stay tacky and it was really frustrating. Um, but so 
Um, I was looking for DAP contact cement because that's what's recommended and it's really good, but I couldn't find it anywhere. I didn't have it at Home Depot, I went to another Home Depot, they didn't have it. Um, I went to Michael's, which was a mistake because Michael's is total garbage and they didn't have it. Joanne's doesn't have it. Um, Joanne's doesn't even have rubber cement. And then I went to uh, Texas Art. Texas Art doesn't have it. So I settled on um, E6000 Quick Hold. I use E6000 all the dang dang time when I'm gluing stuff um, for crafts, but E6000 takes forever to cure. It cures overnight. Um, same with like Barge, which is another contact cement that we use in theater. Um, but I tested this out and it will work for our purposes. It dries a little bit harder than I like. Um, I like it to be more soft and flexible. This is flexible. It just has like a hard edged feeling, but it is pretty quick. You just have to leave it to kind of get tacky for a minute before you start um, putting the two pieces together but then it bonds like so fast. So um, we're gonna be kind of strategically timing out cutting and um, gluing because I don't wanna just be kind of sat here waiting for glue to dry, that's really annoying. Um, so I'm gonna cut this first one out and then I'm gonna glue the center part and work on cutting the other part out. Um, and then as I go, I'm going to do the next section, which is where I mark and cut the mouth plate. Um, you know, obviously the puppet needs a um, stable plastic. So for this section where you work the puppet with your hand, that needs to be rigid. So you can... Um, so we just use plastic and um, adding Krupminger just recommends like a like a tote lid. Um, and luckily for me, I have like a billion useless ass totes hanging around my house. So we just sacrificed one of the lids for, for that. And I think as I continue with this in the future, I'm gonna find a different plastic source. So I'm not just cannibalizing my tote lids all the time. But for right now, that works. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside and then we're gonna glue this first seam right here. Um, I've got my E6000. I have this little silicon paddle um, palette knife that I use for stuff. Oh, it's still got its thing on there somehow. I use this for uh, dye work and stuff sometimes. <laughs> but you can get these at craft stores. Um, in with the palette knives because they have metal palette knives and stuff but I like these silicone ones for uh, a bunch of different sizes of these um, you can kind of see I already tested you can kind of just peel the epoxy right off of it after you're done um, it's really good for like paint and dye work and stuff uh, because you can just peel that right off okay so I'm using that to kind of control the spread of my E6000 because it just kind of comes out as a line, but I want it to, f I need to flood the edges basically. And I don't want to use the side of the nozzle so much because it's going to get all sticky. So here I'm just going to use this guy to spread it. I need to apply more than that. The foam is obviously extremely porous. Um, so it will, you know, kind of like absorb some of this. So you want to make sure that it's really got all the way to the edges, right up to the tippy top and spread nicely. And now I'm going to do the other side here. Oh my gosh, my dog wants to go outside. Wonderful timing, Obi. I'm going to have to text my husband to see if he can come down. He's upstairs playing Final, Four Final Fantasy XIV. I think he's running dungeons today, so to see if we can come take him out. 
I'm just gonna spread this. And on this side, I use maybe a teeny tiny bit too much. It's all right. I bet he needs two poops. Okay, so now I'm gonna kind of just set that aside for um, a min about a minute. And I'm gonna keep working on cutting this bad boy out of here. I love doing craft stuff. There's just something so calming about it. Plus you get to make something fun and like kind of cute at the end of it. I know I'm gonna have a lot of fun playing with these puppets. And maybe it's just cause it's a change up from sewing. I don't know, there's just something refreshing about it. Oops, that was kind of a chonk. Trying to do this kind of quick. Ooh, I can smell that E6000, oh boy. Probably giving me cancer. We used to joke in um, theater that it's a miracle everybody in theater doesn't have like square-headed babies <laughs> because um, all of the dye and glues and stuff that we use, and it wasn't until kind of recently that um, people were like, oh, I need to use you know appropriate safety equipment <laughs> when I'm doing this. Okay, so I'm just kind of squeezing this together. The way that this works is that once it's set, to get, like once I've plopped it together, I can't pull it back apart. It's like really together, which is great. Um, there's a few little holes on the edge here. I wish that I had kind of flooded it back to the edge a little bit better. It's flooded to the edge in the center pretty well on that side, but on this side, not quite as well, but that's okay. It's good enough. Um, so here is the the um, kind of side seam sort of um, for the top of my head. So now you can see that that is my mouth. Oops. Now you can see that this is the mouth and it's gonna kind of come more towards the... This is the chin. Okay, great. Wunderbar. So now we're gonna glue the next edge here, but let me first text Trey to see if he can come take the boy. That boy be barking at me. Oh, here comes Titan. <laughs> Hi, Titan. Hi, girl. You gonna help? I need you to like, I need you to hit it, kitten, because I'm about to start using glue. And I don't want to glue you. Oh, she thinks she's helping. She's really not. All right. Up next, more gluing. So I'm gonna lay down a nice thick line of E6000 here. Do the same deal, I'm gonna come in and spread that around. So I decided to do the Bonitis Businessman because, I mean, I love me a ridiculous 80s businessman. Um, in media, not in real life. <laughs> Trump has shown that you don't want to have one around you in real life. Oh my gosh, Titan. Well, 
enjoy looking at my kitty because she's pretty but she's kind of dumb. <laughs> She's a beautiful idiot and I love her. She's also always up in my biz, which is funny because she's so incredibly particular about everything. About like how you pet her, about when she gets pet, and how. But she's also extremely demanding. Okay, so one thing about the gluing Foam. You just gotta make sure that you got them going the, same, the opposite directions, right? So this one's going that way and the mouth's going this way. So I need this one to go that way and the mouth to go this way. So basically as I'm um, gluing this, which I'm letting it set, so I'm not gonna do it right now. But as I push this um, closed, it's obviously because it's rounded, it's gonna have to go concave one way and convex the other way. So I need to make sure that I've got them going the right directions. So I'm gonna set that aside for a hot second. And I'm gonna trace very high tech here. I'm gonna trace my mouth pattern on my plastic. And then I'm gonna use some tin snips um, to cut this out. Whoops. Very important to mark your center line because that's where it's going to be meeting up with the mouth seam. So I want to make sure that I get that in there. I've already got a straight line cut here, so I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of a, oops, of a break. One less thing to have to cut. So the center line. Now that seam should be ready to glue. Okay, so we're just gonna kind of oomph that together. Now this side is starting to pull apart, so I need to make sure that that gets pressed together nice and firmly. Beautiful. I listen to this radio station. I'm sure everybody knows it. <laughs> chill music to study to. Um, or chill hip hop, whatever the fuck it is. Anyway, um, all the time when I'm studying. So listening to it right now is just kind of weird. <laughs> Okay, so now we have two halves of our head. That means that these, it's time to put this half together, right? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue these two seams. And then we will start cutting with our side cutters. Although honestly, by the time we get done gluing the other half, this one will have probably had enough time to set. This is so much faster than doing it with rubber cement. I cannot even begin to tell you. That was a nightmare. Oh, shit. Bottle slipped. Now I got E6000 on the outside of it, that's great. All right, use my little, my little spatula here, palette knife. Spread it around. Do, 
いけん<笑> OK I'm also excited because I've taken on another、um, commission. Ooh, that kind of separated here. That's not good. So I need to make sure that I kind of bond that little corner back together. When I glue these two pieces together,、um, a friend of mine from.、Uh, The pole community has asked me to make a patchwork、um, teddy bear from her dad's shirts, which I'm very excited to do. I'm going to do that on stream because it'll be my first time making a teddy bear. I've made other kinds of toys before. Oh, I think I maybe need to use a little bit too much glue here.、Um, I've made other kinds of soft toys before for.、Um, Friends, kids, and stuff like that.、Uh, but weirdly, I haven't made a teddy bear before, and I just kind of realized that when she asked me to do it. I was like, oh, yeah, absolutely. I definitely will do that. That sounds fun. And then I was thinking about it, and I was like, have I never made a teddy bear <laughs> somehow? I've made an enormous brontosaurus、um, for one of my, or no, it was a.、Um, A、uh, plesiosaur. Sorry, I made an enormous plesiosaur for one of my friend's kids one time.、Um, but somehow I've never made a teddy bear. And it's gonna be a patchwork one too, which I think is gonna be fun. Which means that I get to do some like pattern creation for it.、Um, which is always fun to do when you're doing like quilting. Little corner that's separated here. Just blomp that in there. Well, it doesn't really want to squish back together. Come on now. I think it needs to dry a little bit more. I don't know why that corner is separating. Weird. Alright, we'll just give it a second. Um, normally, I would go ahead and start with the side cutting, but this side is tacky and ready. This side, not quite. Well, it's getting there. I think I maybe used a little bit too much on this side. We'll see how it goes. Alright, l I'm gonna go ahead. See if I can get that corner back together again. Come on now. Swish, baby. Kinda. Alright. So we're just gonna kinda work our way around this section. I really kind of squeeze it together to make sure that the glue is like mating, as it were. Ugh, starting to get a little squidgy. Pinch that seam together. Yeah, that one side wasn't quite ready to go. I think it'll be okay if we just kind of.
and it wasn't as dry as it really needed to be. Well, it's a learning experience. First couple are never going to be perfect. It's always how it goes in this business. In any business, really, I guess. You learn as you go. And luckily this, um, what we're doing right now, this base, just has to stay together, really. Yeah, that side's holding now, so I think really what it is is just that it was, it's still too wet. I need to give it more time. I always get nervous when it comes to glues, because I'm like... I'm like, if I leave it too long, it'll dry out. But if you don't let it dry enough, then it won't do its thing. It's a balancing act, I guess. Also, in um, sewing, you don't really get, you don't glue things. Gluing is a huge no-no. So you don't get a lot of, as much experience in, in uh, costume shops with gluing. Okay, there we go. That's good. Not quite as pretty as I'd like, but it's all right. All right, so now it looks like a little helmet. <laughs> a little penis helmet. Um, so we gotta chew the uh, chew. We gotta glue the chin together so that we have a head. Oh my god, my nose. Also, I got E6000 all over my fingers, which is less than ideal. You do the best thing in the world, which is peeling glue off of your fingers. Oh man, so good. I don't know why that is universally enjoyable, but it is. It's like peeling a sunburn, except, you know, like you haven't damaged yourself. <laughs> your skin doesn't hurt, you're just a little gluey. Oh man, it is all over my fingers. I need to wear gloves next time I do this. I'm talking about safety precautions that we, you know, eventually came to adopt in theater, and here I am. Gluing with no gloves on. Well, it's better than working with um, dye particles with no particle mask on, which is what we used to do. And you get what we call rainbow snot. <laughs> because um, dye particles are, the powders are um, hydrophilic. Of course, they're designed that way because they need to dissolve very readily in um, liquid. So, even if you are incredibly careful when you open a dye container, some of those little particles, they're so fine, will always get into the air. And they will always find the inside of your nose. Unless you're wearing a particle mask. Um, but yeah, many a time I was like, oh, I'm just gonna do this really quick. I'm gonna be so careful about it. Um, you know, I'll, I'll open it far away from my face, and then I'll just take a little scoop, uh, and then I'll close it back up again. And I go to blow my nose. Oh wait, I need to apply the glue first. I go to blow my nose later, and what do you know? Rainbow snot. Peel this off of my spatula, so we can start again. Alrighty, so here we go. Apply my E6000. Oh, 
most important is to really make sure you get it like all the way up to this edge here because I don't want to have like a little a little crack in the chin by the mouth or by the neck. Like I said, I mean it's it's just kind of a matter of wanting to do a good job because honestly, um, this is gonna get entirely covered in fleece. But it's always nice if it looks really good, you know. All right, now I'm gonna set that aside for a minute. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut these bad boys. I got my 10 cents, which are always funny for me to use because I can like barely manage to get my hand on them. But I use these all the time for when I'm cutting um, boning for corsets and stuff. They are a pain. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this end off because it's just on my way. It's definitely not gonna look pretty. It's coming around all these weird curves. There we go. Get that out of there. Should be slightly easier. It's like there's this weird ridge thing on the side that's like shoving my shears sideways. This is not good for my tendonitis. Okay. I think I need to go ahead and glue this real quick. Yeah, let me go ahead and glue that. Make sure all of my edges are getting all glued together. Beautiful. So now we got a head. Kinda. Can't control the mouth yet. Can't do it yet. Soon. We'll just set him aside. Oop, he's rolling away. And I'm gonna work on getting this bad boy cut out. The nice thing is when I use these usually, I am just cutting lengths of boning. So I just got to cut like a little half inch or quarter inch strip of boning. But here I got to cut a curve, which is really annoying. Who knew? And like I said, these things open wider than my hand. They open like that and my hand is like, ah. So it's really a pain to use them. Okay, that's one out. I gotta clean up the edge here. Ugh. Cut this little section. There we go. And then I'm gonna sand. I'm gonna sand this um, because I'm gonna be gluing the little mouth down to this, and I want to make sure that this is kind of roughed up so that the glue will adhere well. Oops, I didn't close my glue cap. Oh, I can already feel Ouch. my poor hand. It's 
really not good for it. I can need to cut in from the other side. Oh, my poor puppy. Trey's running dungeons upstairs, so he, I don't, I don't think he even saw my text. couple of days probably. I had to stop weaving chainmail because I have tendon I've had tendonitis in that arm for like a decade. Um I need to go back to the orthopedist and see if I can get like a cortisone shot, cortisol shot. But um I had to stop weaving chainmail because the pliers just a little bit of pressure but you have to open and close them and open and close um, jump rings constantly and I would spend an afternoon and I'd weave a couple of couple of bracelets, a couple of necklaces or whatever um, and then for like weeks my arm would just be aching. It already kind of hurts all the time anyway. <laughs> and my hand is swollen most of the time and then um, it's also always colder than my other hand because the blood flow is restricted because there's so much inflammation. Anyway, it's pretty bad. I should probably go to the doctor. I haven't gone, um, I was on Obamacare for a number of years because theater is what it is. Hold on, let me get my sander. Um, and then I finally got insurance through my job at the opera. Which was awesome. I mean, I already had insurance, but I got like regular insurance. Um, but we were working so much overtime, like all the time, that I just never had time to go. We got five days off a year. <laughs> um, we didn't get sick days, so if I wanted to go to the doctor, um, I just wouldn't get paid, basically. So I didn't. And I just dealt with the fact that my arm was trying to fall off all the damn time. And then I got laid off. Um, so my husband and I got married so that I have insurance. Because America is awesome. <laughs> okay. Sanding blocks are the best. I remember when I was younger, before they were like readily available at hardware stores, I just glue sandpaper onto a little, a little chunk of like two by four or something. You know, you can just go in and buy them in whatever grits you want. And... Cutting, cutting board off later. 
Just sand down any burrs that are on the edge here. My hand's gonna be in there, so I don't wanna be scratching myself. Okay, so now we're gonna do the last step for today, um, which is, this is way faster. I think it took at least twice as long the first time I did this, because the, the glue was just awful. So I'm gonna glue this upper lip down um, what I want to do is position this. I need to make sure that my little mark here in the center matches up with that center seam. And then I want to make sure that my um, the edge of that plate kind of lines up with the edge of the mouth. And I'm going to leave kind of like a half an inch um, between the plate and the cut edge of the mouth. Um, and I'm going to apply E6000, so I'm basically just kind of wedging this in here to the appropriate spot. If it moves a little bit, it's not going to be too big of a deal. I just want it to be like mostly in the right spot. Um, I'm going to glue E6000 on the top and on the plate, and I'm going to let them dry a little bit, and I'm going to roll this mouth under. Um, so what I was seeing is that some people recommend you just glue it to, the, um, to this side. But this guy, Adam Krutlinger, who's pigeon, uh, pigeons, puppets I really like, um, he, glue, he glues them like rolled over like that. It gives more surface area to apply to the mouth when you're um, uh, doing the like mouth plate cover thing. But also it makes the mouth softer, which has that like classic Muppet look, which I really like. Okay, so that's kind of wedged in there. So I'm going to peel the gunk off of my spatula. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue those two parts. Hopefully this isn't too difficult. This, this part's a little awkward, honestly. Because you're working like in an enclosed space. Which is part of the reason I figured I would use this little rubber spatula. Because that'll help me really get it the glue into the spots that I need. Okay. I'm just gonna kinda reach in and hold that with my like pointer finger in my left hand. And make sure that this glue is on the outer edge here. as well as on the mouth plate itself. Good to go now? He's downstairs. He's been boofing. Okay, I'll take him up. Okay, thank you. So your dungeons are being a bit of a disaster? Uh, so yeah, I keep, I, keep, I keep getting partnered up with like Leaf DPS. Mm -hmm. um, they don't know what they're doing, which isn't too bad, really. The tanks and the gear are just confidence. I just ran this dungeon, though, that one of the bosses is, uh, I come in there, I'm like, all right, we're going to fight a giant stone guy. It's like, nope, nope, not a giant stone guy. There's a bunch of battlefield effects, and you have to figure out how to not get hit by them. And if you get hit by them, you get locked it out for the next round, and you just have to stand there and hope nobody else screws up like you did. Oh, so I screwed up every single round because I didn't know what was going on because I don't research anything. You know, some BPS, I just go in and mash one button. Yeah. And every time I got stuck and frozen, the tank was hitting console. Oh no. Tank gently consoles you. I'm like, yeah, thanks, the tank. <laughs> thanks, buddy. Smart ass. But anyway. Well, at least he wasn't being mean. No, no one's, I've never run into anyone mean. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna kind of let this dry. Oh my god, I just had my head like really in there and inhaled quite a lot of those fumes. That's not great. That's okay, I have health insurance now. <laughs> Slowly peel more of this glue off of my fingers. Ugh. I even was very adamant about like, oh, not to worry, I'll wear gloves. Cause you really don't want to get this stuff on you. And of course I didn't. Ugh. I've got all the big the big peelies off now and it's just like these little baby peelies that don't want to come off. Just annoying. I have to see if I can go dig out my big bottle of Gojo. Really get this crap off of me. Along with the outer layer of my skin. <laughs> Just how Gojo works. But it leaves you smelling like oranges, which is nice. I have to make sure I clean up really well too, because I have a feeling my little poppers is gonna come in through here and lick up anything that smells interesting. Which is not great. He's outside borking. As is his want. He's a borker. Alright, let's check on this glue. Yeah. I think it's ready. Okay. So now we are just going to see about getting... This section of it was a giant pain in the butt because the foam doesn't necessarily want to glue to the plastic. And I was really hoping that this glue would do a slightly better job, but I think I went in a little bit too early again. This is also my want. And that's what she said, additionally. Ah, there we go. Okay, try the center section again. Basically, if it starts peeling up, you just kind of have to like keep mooshing it down. And it will eventually stay. <laughs> way better than with the rubber cement. Still a little bit annoying because I went in a little bit too early in some of these areas. I also think I was a little heavy-handed with the glue on this corner here. Ooh, Obi sounds mad. I think he's just excited. There's probably a dog out there. He has such a mean sounding bark and he's such a little dog because he's a corgi. I mean, he's not a little dog. He's a medium sized dog on tiny little legs. Um, but he has... Oh, I was like, is he growling? No, my cat is moving the blinds. Um, he has such a, like a deep, like angry dog sounding bark. Here we go. Ugh, I keep doing that. So you can see that the like lip is kind of curled under, which is that really nice soft like Muppet look, which I quite like. I'm gonna kind of push it just right on the edge of the table here to make sure that it's nice and glued down. Great. And then we're gonna go in on the other side the bottom section but yeah it just makes the mouth round you know which i think is a really good look as opposed to this which is like sharp so if we just kind of put this here like that on the edge it gives kind of like a sharp mouth whereas gluing it in um where you roll it under gives it this like soft mouth
All right, so this bottom one is, I mean, the top one was awkward, but this bottom one is even more awkward, I think. You kind of have to like rustle this in here. Make sure that that middle section is lining up and then rotate it. You ever just rotate? And press it kind of in. Sort of like that. Um, it's awkward because this bottom lip is protruding like this. Um, and it the top one doesn't do that quite so much. I don't know why it's like that, but it just is. Sometimes it'd be like that. Okay. So, yeah, this one likes to kind of rotate out. Ooh, annoying. Okay, there we go. I think that's about as good as I'm gonna get it, and then I'm gonna probably have to readjust it a little bit. Um, but I'm gonna apply the glue like this. Now that it has its its little jaws in, I can kind of sit up, which is nice. Peel my spatula. Um, I need to kind of roll that. Make sure it goes into the corner there. Now apply to the top part of this. Okay. Just a little bit more in that corner. And then I'm gonna spatula it up. I did a little too much again. I need to learn to be slightly lighter handed with the glue. in here. Woo, lad. Maybe I need to do this outside. Damn, dude. Hold on, we have a headache. Okay. That was way faster than I thought. Take about an hour to, to prep one of these heads. That's not bad. Um. So... I'm going to do a little bit more research um, later today so that we can start in on the next section tomorrow, which is clothing this head in some flesh. Um, and then we start in on the body. We're going to make some clothes, some hair, some hands. Uh, we're going to do all that stuff in successive videos. I think this might take four or five videos to make a full-on puppet and I am so super ridiculously excited 
to have a puppet to play with. Um, and then I imagine that there's just gonna be a zillion puppets living in my house. That's kind of how it goes. Um, I have a whole bunch of hats and like weird masks and stuff downstairs. Lots of like costume accessories because I'll get obsessed with the craft for a while and I'll just turn out like a zillion masks um, or hats or whatever. So I have a feeling that I'm just gonna make a whole bunch of puppets. Um, maybe I'll sell them, maybe I won't. I haven't really decided yet. Uh, when it's safe to do craft markets again, I'm gonna start up. I'm, I just cannot wait, to be honest with you. I fucking love a craft market. Um, there's something so ins impersonal about selling your stuff on Etsy. People just buy it and then you never hear from them. <laughs> Before or afterwards, you never get to talk to them about what you've made or, you know, what they like or what they, you know, would change about it or whatever. You get no feedback. Very occasionally someone will leave a review, but it's like so few and far between. Um, and I love feedback. Like I like to hear, did I do a good job? Do you like it? Would you do it differently? Is there something that else that you're interested in that you would like to see? Etc. So um, I think I'll probably take my puppets to whatever craft markets I do next. Okay, here we go. Now we're gonna try to Want this thing on in here. Get this center part in. Oh yeah. That's holding better the first time around. Because I left it to dry longer. Who'd have thunk it? It's funny because I'm like, Every instinct tells you don't let your glue dry out because it won't work, but that's how contact cement works somehow. Chemistry, I guess. Hmm. This one corner is not gluing down as well as I'd like. It's not as overlapped as I'd like. I didn't like move it deep enough really. It's not quite half an inch in. Well. That's okay. So, now we got this guy. Hello. I am a puppet head. But yeah, so see this side, the lip, is like not as flat as I'd like. But when we do, I think it'll be okay. I may just have to kind of wiggle that down a little bit more um, when I do the little felt overlay thing. We'll see how I can fix it. And if not, it's only my second puppet. Here he is! Puppet head! And now one of my favorite things I have discovered is to draw some eyes on this guy. Hi boy, were you bad? I heard you out there being bad. Hmm. Got the milk frother from you. Oh no. Oh yeah, it's milk frother time. Okay, here's this guy. It's like the re a regular milk frother, but the spring is mounted in the base. Look. Rather than being like a wand. What? Well. Hold on, let me color this in a little bit better. It has a little power base, like 
Okay, here we go. Are you ready to see him? Introducing this guy. <laughs> He's kind of sleepy. Just a little bit sleepy. Just a turtle. I'm just a little turtle. Happy turtle boy. Little turtle. Bye bye. Looks like Mitch McConnell. No. <laughs> Where's my money, Mitch McConnell? Where's my money? Okay. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye.